Hello everyone. Finally, I made time to put together a PowerPoint and a vid this video on the Royal Stars of Persia. Uh, and uh, the reason, uh, the main reason is because we are getting near the, so, uh, the winter solstice, which I'm also going to talk to you about in a couple of days. And the days are getting darker and darker. And of course, uh, we are going to celebrate Christmas. And the Bethlehem star uh, is another star that triggered my, my uh, curiosity, what it could have been. There are so many ideas and theories uh, that I'm not sure uh, any of them is valid. But of course, we can't know. But at least we do know uh, a couple of things about the four royal stars of Persia. Uh, so let's take a look at the PowerPoint I put together for you. And uh, let me see if I can put this on a... Yes. Okay, so first of all, you, you probably remember from your history studies that the Persian Empire was a, was a huge empire, both in time span, it was at least uh, there for uh, 26,000 years, uh, 2,600 years, sorry. It started um, with Cyrus in um, 600 before Jesus. And it's not Christ. He, when he was born, he wasn't Christ, by the way. So uh, it was before Jesus. That's why I'm using this. And it ended, of course, with modern day Iran, if it ended at all. I mean, there's still this huge country we call Iran and the Persians are still carrying uh, those energy patterns. And it went from the Indus Valley up till the Bosporus. It's, it's a huge span of land as well. And of course, the, uh, the Persians started many wars and they also started many um, many uh, uh, commerce routes. They built more roads than the Romans. And we are always praising the Romans for their roads, but the Persians did it as well. And they did, co did commerce with three continents, Asia, Europe, and, and Africa. And their main central uh, idea or, or um, religion was ar uh, around well, he, Zarathustra, of course, and uh, he said he he talked about two opposing forces, Aura Mazda and Ahriman. Aura Mazda is the light, beauty, harmony, uh, goodness, um, prosperity, and Ahriman is darkness and gloom and and something that is that wants to destroy the whole world. And their fight, their eternal combat, uh, is somehow reflected in human uh, nature. Take a look at Ahura Mazda. Sorry, I wanted this. Take a look at Ahura Mazda here in the um, in this uh, relief. Uh, it's very very funny because it this has wings. This figure, and it looks like as if it was sitting in some sort of aircraft. So you might start wondering whether culture and goodness came from the UFOs. Just a thought. And then in this picture where Ahura Mazda is fighting Ahriman, take a look at Ahriman, it, it looks like a dragon. Uh, it certainly is put together uh, from at least four or five different animals. You see birds, uh, lizard, just this, of course, the dragon, and, but it has a lion face and we are in mortal combat. And according to Zarathustra, um, uh, Ahriman will be defeated uh, uh, in this whole total war, and then Ahura Mazda will bring uh, goodness and, and light to humankind. So that's the, the story. Uh, they, these figures look suspiciously similar to what we find in Mesopotamian myths. Uh, this is Tiamat and Marduk. Tiamat looks like a dragon. Uh, Tiamat and her consort Apshu created the whole world. Apshu is uh, clear water and Tiamat is, is uh, salt water or bitter water. That's the, the word they are using in the original myth. And they coupled and created the, uh, the, the whole, a whole family of, of uh, a host of, of uh, gods and goddesses. And Tiamat then was defeated by Marduk. Uh, and uh, it's an interesting story if you take a look at, at how the, the whole myth developed and what sharp turns uh, the story itself had. How all of a sudden Marduk got elevated as a chief king, uh, a chief king of the gods. 
uh, and then became the chief god after after destroying Tiamat. But again, if you take a good look at these figures, you see that Marduk is winged, and and, and uh, Tiamat looks like a dragon. Here is Isis with the same set of wings, set of things, very very similar. And Isis per se did not fight uh, Seth. Osiris, her husband, did. But it's the same concept. Look at Seth. Uh, it again has this very uh, polymorphous figure of uh, many animals, of course, a dragon, but at the same time, uh, he has this huge penis and, uh, and then the spiked head. So you might wonder what it is. And of course, he is darkness and Isis is light. So you find the, this, this combat, this mortal combat between good and bad, light and dark, uh, uh, sunshine and and eternal gloom uh, throughout Mesopotamia. And of course, uh, of course, the Persians uh, conquered Mesopotamia, and so they they actually adopted some of their concepts. And of course, they got uh, acquainted with Mesopotamian star lore as well, which they utilize in the uh, four uh, royal stars uh, that they they depicted or they they picked uh, among the others. And here, the, the, the mortal combat continues in Ahura Mazda's sons. Uh, he had two sons, Pentamanyu and Angramanyu. And Pentamanyu is the light, uh, the good figure. And uh, Angramanyu is the bad one, the darkness, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the violent, ugly uh, destroyer of light. And again, they are in mortal combat. So you, you see this recurring uh, uh, fight uh, between good and evil, between uh, light and darkness, which is inherent in human in the human psyche uh, and in the third uh, dimension. Now let's take a look at the uh, four royal stars of Persia and the placements I'm uh, uh, listed I'm listing here are for year 2000, so for the millennium, and uh, since uh, royal, uh, since all stars travel one degree per every 72 years, it means that they are very, very slow, slow moving objects. That's why we say fixed stars. And if you want to convert this to, to yearly uh, travel, it's uh, mere 52 seconds per year. But anyhow, these are the placements for year 2000. So uh, just uh, calculate how old you were at, uh, in, at year 2000, and you can actually add or subtract uh, a quarter of a, a degree for every 16 years, every 18 years, sorry, every 18 years. So for 36 years, you add or subtract uh, half a degree. And for 72 years, you add or subtract uh, one degree. So th this is how you, you do the math. Aldebaran is the first one, which is either the horn or the eye, one of the eyes of the celestial bull, Taurus. And at the moment, is it, it is in Gemini, uh, nine degrees and 47. It was in year 2000, nine degrees, 47. Now it's at uh, 10 degrees something, eight or 10, something like that. So, so uh, it, will, it will already cross the 10 degree line. But and if you have anything at, at Gemini, nine, 10 degrees, you can utilize it. At birth, you were able to utilize this particular star. How can we utilize it? Either uh, we have something prominent in our chart, for instance, the sun, the moon, the ascendant, the nodal axis, the mid heaven, uh, the sun ruler, the chart ruler, any personal planet, those, when they are aligned with this degree, and again, you, you use a one degree orb only because these are in possibly vast areas, uh, they are not part of the solar system, so they are not part of the human uh, level uh, or human existence, they are higher dimensional worlds. And uh, the, the, uh, so you use only, if you use only one degree, you are safe. This is one way to utilize them in the chart, within the chart, if they are prominent, this is what we use uh, in such cases, and or um, Another way to utilize them is uh, uh, to actually have a ritual in their owner. 
whenever they become activated either by the sun or the moon. Well, the moon uh, activates all four of them every 27 and a half days, because that is when the moon is completing a, a, a full round on the zodiac. And the sun, the sun's data are going to show you. Uh, it's important also, uh, before we go, before we enumerate the other uh, three um, royal stars, that um, first of all, uh, the Persians thought about these stars as gateways, uh, like dimension portals, but also they were watchers of the four spheres, uh, uh, so uh, west, east, north, and and uh, south and they also uh, thought that these were very very prominent stars that brought all kinds of good uh, and beneficial success but you needed to avoid some sort of nemesis that they also carried and here we should stop uh, before i continue because i of course honor the persians and the tradition and i know that uh, those who work with the fixed stars, or those who have the book by uh, William uh, Vivian Robson, or there are some other books as well on the fixed stars. There's also a brilliant um, uh, website, the Constellations of Worlds, which has uh, which collected all the stars and uh, that were named and put together. It's a brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, website. I use it a lot. And if you have these, uh, then. Uh, you will notice that many stars have very, very negative connotations. And I could never actually uh, accept it because, first of all, uh, the stars are not part of the solar system. They are not part of the human level. They are part of the universe. So to attribute certain human traits and, and uh, uh, characteristics to them is simply not valid uh, to my mind. Uh, what what I see more often than not is that these stars uh, give us uh, potentials to heal or potentials to acquire sp special, very unique uh, uh, characteristics or traits or skills, which we can use then on the the earth level, on the earth plane and the human level, either well or badly. So we can actually you know, uh, utilize them in a bad way, but it's not the star who causes this. It's our choice, it's important. But we are going to tackle what those nemesis are um, when we look at them in, in detail. So that's Aldebaran's position. And then you have Regulus, the heart of the celestial lion. In Leo, uh, 29 and 49, it was in uh, year 2000. Now it's already in Virgo, zero degrees and eight uh, minutes. And, uh, the, the, uh, so it's, it's, it is really did a huge shift. Uh, whenever a fixed star moves signs, it only happens every uh, 2,200 years, 2,160 years to be precise. And when this occurs and the, the star makes the shift, there is a huge shift also in the outside world. And for the last 2,200 2, years, uh, this star was in Leo. And this particular star is the the uh, uh, is where where true anointed kings learn to become rulers, uh, sovereigns. The whole constellation Leo is about how you can rule, how you become become a king, a sovereign, a ruler. But of course, Regulus is the highest energy point within the uh, constellation. So the fact that now it went into Virgo. We need leaders who are willing to serve. At the moment, we have leaders who are idiots, cretins. So then they're not really fulfilling this shift yet. But let's hope that in the next generation or the next era, we will have true leaders and really true national leaders and not some shady, um, uh, you know, World Economic Forum leaders or, or paid uh, uh, um, administrators who are who are simply who can be both and who can be uh, also blackmailed. So this is what we need. We need a big shift in in rulership. 
And then Antares, which is the heart of the celestial Scorpion, is now at Sagittarius 10 degrees approximately. It's at, uh, it was in 2000 at nine degrees 45, which is already at 10 degrees something. And it's the heart of the, the celestial the Scorpio on the point where the Scorpio can actually kill itself uh, by uh, putting the, the poison into his own system. And then Fumahout, which used to be part of Aquarius. Now it's the other star of the southern fish. But uh, it used to be uh, the southern fish and Aquarius used to be one constellation. But with the precession of the equinoxes, what happened, uh, the... The equinox uh, over the thousands of years became higher and this star went down into, so to, to speak, into the underworld of the ecliptic. And actually, when you look at the, the celestial area where Fuma Hout is at the moment and was always, it is a very dark area of the, the sky. There are not too many sky, uh, stars over there. And that is why this particular star is also called the loneliest star in heaven. And uh, if you uh, if you're going to tackle what, what they mean, uh, we are going to delineate them in a minute, you will see that it is very true. It's at Pisces, four degrees at the moment. It used to be at 351 in 2000. Okay, what do I do now? Um, this, okay, hold on a second. I need to stop sharing because for some reason, um, I hate this. Okay, let's let's see if I can share it again. Maybe I will leave it here, and and I don't care how. how. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not very able to. Okay, so if we go back to, I'm not going to um, put it on the um, um, slides. I'm going to to look at it this way because I can manage. So if you look at these four areas. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Obviously, these are the four fixed signs. And think about what the, uh, the fixed sign, uh, signs are doing in, in our charts. The more fixed uh, planets you have, the more uh, sturdy and, uh, uh, and, and able you are in uh, solidifying things. So it's solidification, it's perseverance, uh, and, and, and actually uh, uh, the, the, the ability to stay in a situation at all costs and try uh, and striving to finish it, trying to complete it. Those are the fixed signs. And of course, it, they are completion signs as well. Uh, in Taurus, you can create harmony and financial stability. And of course, you can also enjoy life. In Leo, we can actually create ourselves. If you look at the um, um, uh, celestial pathway of the hero, the first four signs, um, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer are the initiative signs where we learn to practice and understand the, the elements. Those are the first encounter with the elements. And in Leo, we encounter fire the second time. And th this is where we can actually create ourselves. Uh, so our, our individuality. And in uh, Scorpio, we experience the full spectrum of, uh, of emotions. In, in, uh, in Cancer, we are just getting acquainted with, with emotions, it, but it is in Scorpio where we actually get into them and, and experience them at, uh, in, as a full-blown energy. And then in uh, Aquarius, uh, it, it, this is the place where we can actually uh, create uh, beautiful um, theories that can help humankind and uh, that are actually helping human existence here on the earth plane. Unfortunately, this has been completely confiscated by the neo-Marxists at the moment, but the moment Pluto moves into Aquarius, which will happen in 2023, but the full uh, uh, ingress is going to happen only in 2024. So all we have is like a year's time and we need to find new, complete humanistic uh, theories because the ones that are now prevalent are horribly, horribly anti-human. Uh, these neo-Marxists and also the greens, the really red greens, I call them, hate humanity, they hate mankind. They want to sacrifice us humans 
for the sake of God, Mother Gaia for Earth. And it's so ridiculous and so inhuman. Why would you like to keep Earth? For, for whom? For what? It's ridiculous. So, so yes, my dear friends, uh, if you agree with me, we need to we need to put together well, well working and 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 far sighted theories for mankind to find a new era and a, a new a new uh, uh, well a new era is a good word for it. So that's that's what what we need to do. Here are the areas in the sky of course this is something that you never see uh, you see only portions of the sky so you never see it as a sphere but these are uh, the places where these uh, particular fixed stars are and you can see that they are really opposite each other Aldebaran and Antares are actually at opposite sides of of the uh, uh, of the uh, the globe I mean the celestial globe and so is Regulus and Fumahout and you can see that uh, Fumahout is uh, is at this dark area in the sky. So it's really uh, dark and gloomy there. And so, it's, so that's why it's a very lonely star. Also, if you look at the, um, the magnitude, all these bright stars are the brightest probably because they are all around one magnitude. So uh, they're really beautiful and bright. Now, not too many bright stars, by the way. Um, if you take a look at the approximately six to 8,000 stars that are visible, uh, then uh, I think there are only 19 or 20 uh, that are of first magnitude. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not at all so um, common. Let's take a look at these uh, stars. And now we are going to look at them, what, what gifts they can bring and also what the nemesis for each each one is. Uh, nemesis is used by Bernard Brady in her book, uh, the Brady Book of Fixed Stars, and also in her Starlight magazine many times. Um, it's simply, to me, it's not a nemesis, really. It simply means that these are very strong stars. With, I mean, they are very bright, they are rich in myths, and uh, you can utilize them in bad ways as well. The star itself is never bad. Star cannot bring bad stuff. You can misuse them. That's true. So that's the uh, Aldebaran, which was the water of the East. And uh, uh, it brings luck, high rank, and glory. But you need to maintain your integrity, which means that, that you cannot give up your principles. And also, you cannot choose the easier pathway. Uh, you cannot cut, you cannot have shortcuts in your life. You need to really accomplish everything. So it's kind of it does have some Saturn uh, energy if you consider it, because whenever you are in in good relationship with Saturn, Saturn brings gifts to you as well. So uh, when Aldebaran is prominent in your chart, uh, be sure to maintain your integrity at all costs. Don't have shortcuts. Don't be lazy, uh, because uh, uh, if you become an opportunist or you become lazy, uh, it's not going to serve you. Uh, Regulus is the watcher of the north, and this is the heart of the lion, uh, of course, Corleone, if uh, uh, you, you want to, to use another phrase. And uh, the whole constellation, as I said, is about ruling, reigning, uh, and, and sovereignty, how to become a ruler, a king, a sovereign. And this is exactly what it brings, because it provides almost superhuman achievements if it's prominent. So it's like those people can accomplish almost anything, really. And they have a, a great uh, um, tendency to rule or reign in, in, or to become sovereigns. But there's one thing that you need to avoid at all costs, and this is revenge. Now, if you consider how people in high places, high positions, very often are prone to, to revenge, uh, then uh, you can see why their downfall is so easy. Um, so again, it's not Regulus who makes you want revenge. It's actually helping you to avoid it by knowing that you can rule that you can achieve superhuman uh, things. Antares, which is the, the water of the West, uh, the, the heart of the, uh, the um, Scorpio, and this is where you can 
actually cut your cell. The Scorpio can kill itself by, uh, by uh, you know, getting the poison in this uh, position. And this is a very strong star. Actually, this star is not just on the ecliptic, but also on the Milky Way. So it had a double function because it's also one of the pillars of the, um, of the uh, Milky Way. Uh, which I'm go probably, hopefully, going to make another uh, video on the pillars of the four pillars of the Milky Way. And uh, I have a student, not a student, a watcher, actually a watcher, uh, like a watcher in the West, uh, who actually gave me drawings. So I'm going to use that. Uh, her name is Eva, and uh, if she sees this video, I'm thanking her uh, ahead uh, or in advance. So Antares is a very strong star, and in in it, its case. Uh, success comes through concentrated attention, almost magic-like uh, focus. And uh, if you think about practical magic, or any, if you have read an, about magic, uh, concentrated focus is one of the things that you need uh, in order to have uh, a success in any magical work. So uh, it's it's very similar to that. If you if Antares is prominent. Then you are able to do that. You are able to focus on something and keep this concentration uh, for long periods of time, and that is what brings success for you. Uh, the only thing that needs to be avoided is stubbornness, almost maniacal behavior, and uh, and uh, because that's what happens when you are very concentrated and very focused. There's one step uh, towards uh, the negative, and you become obsessed. Uh, and, uh, and 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 completely crazy. Okay, and Fumahaut is the watcher of the south. Now, if you take a look at this picture, uh, the uh, this is the water bearer and the southern uh, fish at the at its very end, uh, as the uh, the water flows out of the the jar and then uh, the jar ends in this fish kind of. But this used to be one constellation. For a long time, for for ages, actually, and it became two only uh, after six uh, uh, sixteen hundred something like that. And uh, this is a funny star because this is a very mild and uh, uh, and not as strong as the rest. I mean, the 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 other three are really strong and very prominent, and they, the success they bring are. A prominent is prominent in the regular world, in the outside world. Uh, uh, this one is more more of an inner energy pattern. First of all, it's a lonely star. Okay, the, the loneliest of the stars. This is how it was labeled, and uh, it means that it remains somehow inside. It remains uh, within, and it doesn't really come out uh, very strongly, and it uh, provides success. And luck as well through noble ideas and dreams and mystical abilities, and it's quite prominent in the charts of uh, mystics and and uh, uh, religious people or religious religion founders, and uh, also uh, in uh, in artists. So that's where you can find them. And the nemesis you need to avoid is illusions. So uh, when you fall into the trap of illusions, this is what you need to avoid at all costs. And uh, all three, all four stars are from could be prominent in your own chart. If it is, if it is conjunct or aligned with any outer planet, okay, then it's not such a big deal because first of all, uh, those could be generational, and uh, also. Uh, you, it's hard for you to bring it down to your own uh, uh, personal level. But if it is conjunct any of your uh, personal significators or your personal planets or the angles, any of the angles, it's easier to download its energy. And once a year for two, three days, you can download any of them. Here are the dates. For Aldebaran, it's May 29 to, to 31. For Regulus, it's August 21 to 23. For Antares, it's December 2nd to 4th. And for Fuma Haut, it's February 22nd to 24th. If you create a ritual, you can download its energies, any of the, these energies through the sun, through, the, uh, through enlightenment, through in illumination. That's it at the moment. I will uh, 
hopefully make a, a, another video on the four pillars, the stars of the four pillars uh, or pillar stars of uh, the Milky Way, and, and we'll tell you why they are important and how they are linked to the uh, four uh, royal stars of Persia. And soon I will put together the, uh, the winter solstice as well. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.